Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Cooler and welcome to Ask Mark, all you wonderful people out there. I'm back answering more of your interesting diving questions. Uh, if you have any questions that you want me to just elaborate on, chat about, by all means, let me know down in the comments below. And if you use the hashtag Ask Mark, uh, it just makes it a lot easier for me to find them. This week we're talking about dry gloves, uh, getting back into diving, um, carbon, uh, carbon back plates, sorry, it skipped a line. Um, yeah, carbon fiber back plates, uh, pouches, solo diving, and prescriptions for your mask. Uh, so let's dive straight into the first question, which comes from Emma H89. Uh, and they ask, I'm just about to start using a dry glove system on my dry suit. Uh, the gloves that I have fit me, but they are reasonably snug when I have my thermal glove on. How snug should dry gloves be? Will it cause pinching or be uncomfortable? with pressure underwater. Um, you do want them to be fairly snug. Uh, it's, it's an airspace. Um, so the less airspace that's inside of that glove means that you're gonna get less of that squeeze effect. Um, so, I mean, my, my gloves, <coughs> um, so with just a basic liner, I think these are QB, um, and then you have your radio dry glove. They're, they are really pretty tight. Um, there is a little bit of like airspace on the inside, um, but sort of with that, it it's not going to compress and squeeze quite as much. What you do want to do is with your uh, your dry glove system, you probably had um, are they in here with it? Oh, they'll be in that little bag. Um, it'll probably have yeah. Um, some, or hopefully have, some like silicone tubes like these. Um, so these are just very, very small capillary tubes. Um, you usually get them with dry glove systems and it's just a silicone tube. It's a very, very small little hose um, and that you tuck it underneath your cuff seal in your wrist so that one part of it is inside of your dry suit and the other part is inside your dry glove. That way it can allow air to travel from inside of your dry suit into your glove. And if you feel that your fingers are getting a bit squeezed, you just put your hand up and the gas naturally goes up and it kind of un, it kind of puffs up on your, on your hand uh, and vice versa as well. Some divers, they just use the, uh, the thumb loop from their undersuit. They just leave that on. Uh, my one, it gets a little bit annoying um, when it's in that kind of crook of your thumb, you can feel it and it's, it, it doesn't dig in, but on longer dives, you just sort of notice it and it is a bit more uncomfortable uh, than just using a uh, silicone tube. Um, but anything really to, uh, to break that cuff seal, just a little bit. You don't want too much because if you do uh, rip a glove and, and it does flood, of course you don't want it to flood your entire suit, so try and keep your hand um, down um, when if it is ever around um, sort of cut. But you don't want them too, um, too roomy on the inside. The water pressure will fix it, um, but you don't want to get any uh, sort of pinching effect. But uh, but yeah, pr pretty snug um, when it's on. Uh, you only get, yeah, it's mainly kind of around here that you get any excess material. Um, but no, you do want them fairly close and snug to your hand. Patrick Mowry asks, I'm only basic open water certified, but that seems to cover most dive sites in the Florida Emerald Coast. Since I've not gone in in over 15 years, is adding enriched air enough for me not to be a restriction on the other divers? Uh, I've been doing the Nari free online courses as a refresher and plan a few lake dives for practice before trying any wrecks. Um, so you've not been diving for 15 years and, and you wanna get back into it, but you're thinking about taking the uh, the enriched air nitrox course um no that that's probably the the one course that i wouldn't uh, sort of do i mean definitely do it but not as a um, to get you back into the water because uh, nitrox in most cases is a dry course you don't even get into the water uh it's more sort of academic um the one thing i would recommend uh, is just to do a, a scuba review or whatever it is with an instructor um to to go through the the practical things of being in the water chances are it's like riding a bicycle you, you'll get straight back 
back into it, um, but I'd, I'd rather you spend a bit of time in a, a safe place, practice your uh, your practical skills, and um, and just get back up to. Um, uh, back up to speed with your skills and being in the water, how everything feels, how everything works, uh, instead of just do, doing your nitrox and then just hitting the water, um, just for your own safety and everyone else's. Um, when when you're thinking about going into uh, into wrecks as well, you're doing quite well in that. Yes, you, you want to plan some some safer dives to really get back into the flow of things before going straight into wrecks and especially wreck penetration because that can be quite dangerous. Um, so yeah, by all means, I do your nitrox course and your enriched air course, but. I'd also do some kind of scuba review with a uh, with an instructor just to make sure that yeah you're you're practicing just the fundamental skills that you need and then when you get back into the water you're much more confident if something should go wrong you've literally just practiced it somewhere safe uh, instead of just jumping straight in because things have changed in 15 years we don't do the quarter turn back turn anymore on your valve uh, all those kind of things so it's best if you take a, a scuba review as well as that nitrox course the Bioprene crew says, uh, hi Mark, we're huge fans of your videos, thank you. Um, diving an Aqualung Dimension wing jacket today. Uh, I plan to move on to my very first backplate and wing setup. Uh, single tank recreational diving only. My question is, why would I choose a light carbon or aluminium backplate over a steel one, uh, ending up with even more extra weights to the belt for trim? Would position-wise a steel backplate even help with horizontal balance? Thanks. Um, oh, thanks, Flo. Uh, yeah, so the main reason for the carbon fibers and the aluminium ones is the weight. Um, it's just travel because a uh, stainless steel backplate, uh, I mean, my one, oh, that one's gonna weigh struth, a couple kilos. Um, that's just solid steel. Um, so getting on an aeroplane with that uh, is a bit prohibitive. Whereas if you've got carbon fiber, incredibly lightweight, like grams. Uh, aluminium, again, it's under a kilo. So it's for traveling. But yes, you do have to offset that where you probably need to add a bit of extra weight to your weight belt. However, if you're traveling, chances are you're diving in uh, in warmer climates so less exposure protection so you don't need that extra weight anyway so it is all that balancing act um, but with stainless steel of course yeah it's, it's heavy so it does add that trim weight i mean the mara's uh, six mil back plate that's like four kilos just in the back plate and i think that's skeletonized as well so they could have made it even heavier but instead of having like ditchable leads you have this trim weight which obviously you can't ditch in an emergency well you could but you'd be ditching your entire bcd um but does it affect your horizontal balance yes it does because instead of all of your weights just being around your midsection uh, either on a belt or in integrated weights what most people do to try and spread their weight anyway is move it up onto their cam bands up towards the back of your shoulders and that's where the back plate is it's spreading it up a bit forwards um, sort of towards your shoulders and over your back so and it's nice and close to your body the further away you put that lead the more of a, a, a kind of a tilt effect it's going to have so it's nice and close to your body it's close to your center of buoyancy so it is going to hold you in that nice horizontal position and most divers do need a bit more lead over or a bit more weight over their shoulders to try and get them more horizontal too many divers are still quite upright with their head up and their, their fins down so a bit more weight up over your shoulders does help to balance you over so it's really down to lightweight for travel but you still want that customizability uh, of a, a backplate and harness system that's why you go down the carbon fiber and the aluminium. Personally, I went down aluminium just because I've never really used carbon fiber and I've, I have heard of it delaminating. I don't think it's a huge issue, but it is something that I've read about. Whereas aluminium, it's just a sheet of aluminium. There's, there's not much that you can do with it. You, you can bend it a little bit if you really try, um, but realistically it's, it's nice and strong and stainless steel is just there for the weight and the strength um, but yeah it, it will help with your horizontal balance so if you're a traveling diver i usually go down aluminium route um, 
yeah because that weighs nothing um i think that's about 700 grams off the top of my head uh compared to my steel Ugh, back plate and that's skeletonized as well that's got some taken out of it that still weighs a good one two kilos at least um so so that's why we have the different materials Dwayne T asks, is there a bag to put with a bolt snap onto your BCD, uh, your DSMB and spool whilst diving? Yeah, they do exist. You want something, it's usually called a butt pouch. Uh, we're never too imaginative with our names. Um, they come from side mount diving and it typically sits yeah, just over your butt because for side mount, it's out of the way. With the cylinders down your sides, it, just pockets get quite tricky to reach. Whereas the small of your back, just over your butt, you can usually reach that fairly easily. Um, so yeah, you do get some butt pouches to, um, to store things like your DSMB and a spool. They'll usually have two, um, uh, two D-rings on them, and then you attach two double-enders to clip onto uh, to a pair of D-rings, because um, that's what you have sort of in the small of your back on a lot of side mount rigs. Um, on, a, on a normal, um, uh, what you call it, uh, single or twin rig, you'll probably only have one, unless it's X-deep. X-deep tend to have two, um, so you just have to clip it off to there. That's where I often um, sort of clip things so that they're, they're out of the way. Downside to that is that when you're on dry land and you go to sit down, your cylinder will often sort of sit on top of whatever's on that butt D-ring. Um, so you'd have to clip it off like towards your waist. Other options are of course thigh pockets. Uh, we get tech shorts. Um, most dive companies, they, they call them tech shorts. Um, and they are just literally, uh, just a, a pair of shorts and they have thigh pockets on either side. Um, so that's where I typically store my DSMBs and spools. Um, if I'm in my dry suit, my dry suit has them built in. Uh, and if I'm just diving in a wetsuit or just in a rash vest, I typically wear these so that I have that storage on my thighs. They're nice and close to my body. Uh, you can still reach them pretty easily instead of having to try and get into a BCD pocket. Um, but yeah, an, an actual like separate pouch just for a DSMB and a spool, they do exist. Uh, if you search for butt pouches, uh, you should find something. You either get the flat ones or um, I think they just call it expanding, uh, where there's a, a zipper or it is just a bit chunkier to give you a bit more storage space. Mike Davies asks, does BZAC recognize SDI solo and paddy self-reliant courses and allow divers to go solo on club dives? Um, I don't think so. I think I've actually specifically seen a quote from BZAC that says we do not support um, uh, solo diving. However, they do um, uh, they do appreciate the, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the words, the, just being able to be self-reliant. Um, that's the way they, they always teach a lot of their divers so that if you do get separated for whatever reason, you're okay, you can complete the dive and get out safely. Um, but no, I don't think on any of um, BZAC dives, correct me if I'm wrong, by all means, I'm, I'm in no way a BZAC instructor or anything. Um, I, I don't think they recommend or support divers just going in by themselves. I think they always recommend that buddy team um, just to get you out of, uh, get you out of dodge. Um, but they, they do always, um, uh, recommend, I suppose that's the best word, recommend that you, you you plan and prepare the dive and you actually dive as if you are by yourself self-reliant um, to be able to get yourself out of problems and, um, and have enough redundant backups that you are diving safely. I think a lot of them dive with pony cylinders, so it's a completely separate air source with a separate regulator and everything. Um, so that should something go wrong, you do have that independent air supply, uh, a lot of redundant backups and all that good stuff. Um, but I don't think that BZAC recommends diving by yourself. Um, they, they, they'll they always, I presume, uh, they'll, they'll always recommend that buddy team setup. And finally, William Sweet asks, do they make readers uh, for us older divers? So for prescription lenses in masks, uh, you really have uh, four 
options usually there there kind of is a fifth but it's a bit macgyver um i know the mask that you're specifically looking at is the boshat shark mask so that's a low profile more of a free diving mask so that kind of limits your options the best option um which is unfortunately the most expensive option um but such is life, um, is to send the mask off to a company with your prescription and they will physically grind and make a lens and then put that into that mask. Um, the one that I used to recommend was Axis Optical. I don't know if they're still um, trading because um, I, I haven't done anything with them for years, but they might still be about, so have a look. Um, and they, they literally used to look at your prescription and the scuba divers as well so they need to take the effect the, that magnifying effect of the water into account and they would yeah sort of make an actual lens for the shape of the mask and then put that in um otherwise you can get some um some lenses that can like affix to the inside uh, they're usually only for like reading lenses just at the, the very bottom so you can read your gauges when you look down the rest of the lens is just clear glass uh, or flat glass I should say um, they're okay but they're fairly limited as far as the um, the prescription goes it's usually only the spherical reading I believe that is that one and you get sort of plus and minus values it's normally like plus one, minus one, uh, one and a half. It usually doesn't go below one. In a lot of cases, I don't even know if it goes to one because of that magnifying effect of the water. It doesn't go down to the really small ones because uh, you don't always need glasses uh, or prescriptive lenses in your mask uh, because of that magnifying effect of the water. Um, but if you have, is it the axis? There's, there's all those different readings on your um, on your prescription. And if yours is fairly complicated, then those basic lenses, they'll probably help a little bit, but not 100%. Um, so that's where these like stock lenses do fall down. Um, the, there's a more permanent version to the ones that you kind of stick to the inside of your, um, uh, of the lens. You can get some some masks um mara is having a new mask that come uh, that's coming out in this um i think it's around summertime um but there's a few others there's like two sasios uh, scuba pro did some where you could actually pop out the um uh, the existing like blank flat lens pop those out and then fit actual replacement uh, prescription lenses similar to the previous ones it was only like plus one and a half plus two plus two and a half plus three uh, and then minus on the other side um, but again that only corrected the spherical reading on your prescription um, anything else complicated uh, they they wouldn't cover that because it's it's just a stock lens that you just take off the shelf um, the the last option um, is oh no there, there are two more so there, there's one uh tusa made a universal lens holder thing um and a few others made them but for full face masks and it, and it was basically just a, a small frame uh that was kind of flexible and you could pop different lenses in similar to um uh, to the previous one you get plus one plus two and it had these little arms sticking out of the side so you could bend it and then kind of put it into your mask it was better for single lens masks because with twin lenses you had that extra section of silicone over your, the uh, the bridge of your nose over here and um and putting an, an extra frame on the inside of the mask it got a bit crowded and it would push up against your forehead and that wasn't very comfortable um the MacGyver way is to take a pair of your existing glasses, um, snap the legs off, it's usually older glasses, snap the legs off, uh, clean them up so they don't damage the inside of your mask and then kind of pop them in. Um, but of course it has to fit your mask and it's only fairly limited. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a stop gap, it'll do the job, but it's, it's a bit um, MacGyver. Um, so yeah, the, the best option is of course the, the most expensive one um, where you can send off 
I think it was virtually any mask and someone will make that prescription into that mask. Next one down is a dedicated mask that is specifically you can disassemble and swap those lenses out. It's also quite nice to, to clean your mask between dives um, so that nothing's growing on the inside. It's quite nice to be able to dis uh, disassemble and then reassemble it. Um, you get the little sticky ones that stick onto the inside. Um, and then some kind of frame that sticks on the inside. But for a low profile, like an apnea mask, it is probably that expensive option is gonna be your best choice. And that's it for another week. Um, so yeah, dry gloves, you want them fairly tight. You want them pretty snug to your hands uh, and also try and break that cuff seat a little bit just to allow any gas transfer to get into your gloves. Uh, all you really have to do is just hold your hand in the air to, uh, to allow some of that gas from your dry suit to transition into your dry gloves to, uh, to just equalize that air space. Uh, getting back into diving, uh, if you do a dry course, yeah, it's okay, but it is best to physically go diving uh, sort of with someone in a safe environment. Uh, so something like a scuba review or whatever now we um, call it, it is best to uh, sort of do that. Just have a chat with your local dive center when you're doing the, uh, the nitrox course and, uh, and they should help you out. Back plates, um, carbon fiber and aluminium back plates, great for travel, but of course, if you're diving somewhere cold, then you need to add a lot more lead to your belt, whereas stainless steel does add that weight to your, uh, your entire system, and it spreads it over your back and over the top of your shoulders to help you get that more horizontal trim position, um, so that's always beneficial. Uh, pouches for DSMBs, yeah, just search for butt pouches um, or, or some kind of drop down pockets uh, and then you can just clip that off to a D-ring. It's going to flap around a little bit unless you have two D-rings to clip it off to. Um, but a, a better option that I would recommend is thigh pockets, uh, either in tech shorts or just sort of on your wetsuit or your dry suit. Solo diving with BZAC. They don't really recommend it, um, I don't believe, uh, but they do recommend that you are a bit more self-reliant. Uh, and prescription masks in your lenses, uh, or sorry, prescription lenses in your mask, uh, you usually have four options and they range in price, but they also range in quality. Uh, if you've got any interesting questions, by all means, let me know down in the comments below. And if you use the hashtag, this one, um, Ask Mark, just makes it a lot easier for me to find them because it, it just filters it behind the scenes. Um, remember to head over to simplyscuba.com for all of your diving equipment. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.